Me back again. Mm. I can't wait to react to this video. So, big up man like Samuel Leeds. He's a property entrepreneur. My man's got hundreds of thousands of properties in that multi, multi, multi millionaire. I've been seeing these clips of this sort of TV series. It's like where two people with opposite mindsets and that go head to head. Uh, I recently done a reaction video with an older woman who's like 60 plus and some young girl that's 23 years old and that and the little girl the young girl was complaining about how he's hard and that and the older people them had it easier and that or whatever and so that was a good local video uh this one is landlords versus tenants now let me just say something right now it's like there's a war going on between landlords and renters landlords and tenants and these fucking tenants let me tell you something right now i tell you for free these fucking tenants have too much rights i meet these people on the these jobs that I go to working in Northampton and they told me before like oh I used to live in a private rented property but that cunt of a landlord decided to put the rent up from £500 to £600 so I stopped paying the rent altogether not the landlord put the rent up from £500 to six or £700 and I continued giving him £500 because that's what I could afford no the landlord put the rent up from £500 to £700 and I stopped paying yeah he had to evict me Obviously, I'm at work, innit? But I won't cuss too bad word, you know. So, there's a war going on between landlords and, and tenants. These, te these, these tenants and these people think that landlords are some evil people that sit underground like some minotaurs and think, <laughs> inflation, cost of living, the base rate's gone up. <laughs> I'm going to suck and bleed the life out of these tenants and leave them on life support. No. Anyway, I got called some landlord the other day because I must have obviously pulled up to my, my flat and told off, uh, well, I released a video that I did uh, when, I, when I pulled up to the, my flat and told off the tenants and that. I released that video a couple of days on TikTok, got called a slum landlord, but that video was like a year old and that. But anyway, man, without further ado, let's get into it. So landlords versus tenants. Little argument and it should be good still. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Every month or every year or whatever it is to the point where I cannot afford it. Come so you're saying you have the right to choose what you think is fair. Hello. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. Thank you for doing this and yeah, hopefully you'll be able too. to hash it out nicely. Yeah, we'll see. It's too difficult to evict tenants who don't pay the rent. Correct. We need more support. Correct. Yep. A tenant can move into a house and after a month, that pussy hole could say, I'm not paying rent and the government is going to fucking back them, blood. Literally, the tenant, they put in, was it section 21, where you can't give them a non-fault eviction. What's a non-fault eviction? Oh, I want you gone because I want to um, do some renovation works or I want you gone because I just want to move my cousin in or I want to move. Nope, you need, they, you need to have a reason to evict these people now. And before you can even evict people, you need to, they need to have not paid the rent for like three months before you can even put in an application that might not get seen to for another three months. These fucking people have got too much rights, man. We're in a cost of living crisis. There's a lot of landlords that can't afford to have tenants that don't pay them any rent. And now, not only are they not making any money, but they're actually losing money because they're still having to pay the mortgage. So morally, mm -hmm. you're okay going to sleep at night. Yes. Knowing that you have evicted a family and put them out at risk of homelessness onto the street. You're yes. okay with that? Yes. Here's what irritates me, right? What irritates me? It's not, it's not his job to house these people. Yeah, it's his job to obviously have a property that's fit for purpose and that. But... On like a person to person level, it's not his job to house anybody. It's not his job to make sure that the kids who are living with the parents and that have a roof, have a, have a home. That is the parents job. Why the fuck are you having children and you don't even have a property? So that means, hold on a minute. You could bring a life into the world, but you couldn't be bothered to save up 25 grand to put down a deposit for your own house or flat. 25 grand. 25 grand. Blood, you should be able to save up 25 grand in two and a half years. Dumbasses. Is when tenants tell me they can't pay rent because their mom just died. They would never call their energy provider and say, I can't pay my energy bill because my mom died. They would never call Sainsbury's and go in and say, my mom died, can I have free food? Why do they come to me? They prey and leech and use emotional manipulation on struggling landlords 
with stories of why they can't pay the rent and it's wrong. So, so you're telling me that tenants are the ones who are preying and leeching on Correct. landlords? Correct. I think there should be empathy for people struggling. All right, I'll, be, I'll serve a very empathetic... Empath there is no empathy in business. Pathetic eviction notice. What about people who, like I said, can't afford food, can't afford to feed their families? What do Sainsbury's say? They say... That's their fault. What's, what, what has the landlord got to do with that? That is their fault. The reason why they're struggling is because they made poor decision after poor decision after poor decision. The reason why this guy here, Samuel Lee, is not struggling for bills because he made good decision after good decision. I am not struggling for bills. I never will struggle for bills because I've made preparation. I've made sacrifice. I've made good decision after good decision after good decision. And it's a snowball effect of good decisions and good outcomes. Hey, you can't come buy food unless you have money. You need money. Landlords should be able to charge what they see fit in terms of rent to protect their property. Absolutely. If you've got something, if you're selling a laptop, who chooses how much you sell that laptop for? You choose how much you sell the laptop for. If you overcharge and you say, I know it's only worth a grand, but I want two grand, guess what's going to happen? No one's going to buy it. And it's the same with properties. If you've got a property and the rent is worth a grand and you go, actually, I'm going to put it on for two, guess what's going to happen? You're going to have an empty house. That's going to be two grand for this mouldy, damp, barely fit for purpose house. Dad, where are you living about mouldy, damp, barely fit for purpose house. Blood, that's how I know this girl is poor because that's all she's ever experienced, mouldy and damp houses. You think any of my properties have mould and damp in the property? Yeah, I went to, when I first got the keys to my most recent purchase, which was in December of 2022, just after Christmas, um, yeah, there was like, like mould spores on the wall. I dealt with that. I fucking dealt with that. But like, what do you mean moldy damp? See, that's what I'm saying. She's just going into it with a negative perception. Uh, just going into it with a negative mindset. Oh, moldy damp, fit, unfit for purpose property and that. But where are you living? Where are you living? I know you're not living good because there's no one in Chelsea that's talking about, oh, the last few properties I've run off of landlords have been mold and dampy and unfit for purpose and that. So I know this girl is broke, man that the landlord thinks is fine to charge that much money for. Landlords are able to charge whatever they want for any type of property. It can be the most amazing, well-kept for property, or it can be literally a hovel. We have a massive shortage of houses, and every year we fail to build the amount of houses. And as a result of that, because there's a shortage of houses, there's way, you know, I, I know, I'll put a property on for rent, I'll have 27 applications. I get it. Housing is a right. You have a right to shelter. You have a right to safe shelter. If it's a right, who's going to pay for it? If you're saying, I should just have a right to live in a house. Everything should just be free. Do you know what they should do? You see how the government protects these tenants and that? I would love for the government to protect the landlords. Why doesn't the government protect the landlords? See, the government's protecting the tenants. saying, oh, you know, you have to wait three months, six months or ten years before you can kick them out and that. Why doesn't the government start, I guarantee you, yeah, <laughs> the government will change their tune if there was a law in place to say that if the tenant has stopped paying rent and you can prove it, i.e. no money coming into the bank account and that, the government has to pay the landlord until they get the tenant out. You see, you see, the, see the government, yeah, they, they want to be on the renter's side and that because they know it, it, it's not harmful to them. It's only harmful to the landlord. But I promise you, if the government had to pay the, the, the landlords and that, there will be a different outcome. 110 fucking percent, blood. Hey, who's going to pay? I didn't say it was for free. I just said it was a right. Okay, well, what do you mean by a right? You have to pay. That's called the world we live in. That pay should be in line with what you are able to afford. I have the right to be able to live in my home and not fear eviction, right? And I have the right not to have my rent increase so drastically every month or every year or whatever it is mm -hmm. to the point where I cannot afford it. Can so I you're saying you have the right to choose what you think is fair. You should just say, I think it's fair to pay this for a house, therefore I have the right to pay that. I didn't say that. I'm, ju I'm just trying to understand because it doesn't make any sense. I think homelessness shouldn't exist. I think people should not be homeless. Sure. That's their problem. The reason why they're homeless, like I said, because they made bad decision after bad decision after bad decision. You will never be homeless. If you get educated, you are an ambitious person, you do well in your exams, you um, go for the best and highest paid job you can, you turn up to work every single day, you work until you know you're, you're, you're allowed to leave, 
You know what I'm saying, innit? Yeah, you, you have a positive mindset and that. When you get paid, you save your money, you make sacrifice and that, and you make investments, you will never be homeless. The people that become homeless are the people that don't do exactly what I said. Find me someone that has done all of that and don't have some drug and alcohol addiction, obviously, yeah? Find me someone that does all of that and become homeless. I'll just fucking delete my YouTube channel, pussy. People shouldn't be sick either, and isn't it a shame that people die? That's Those the world. are not any, that is not comparable in it any is. way. It is. Absolutely not. It's the world we live in. Yeah, of course people die. That's just life. But homelessness is not life. Homelessness is a societal problem. Homelessness is something that we created. But you have no solutions of how to fix it. Homelessness is not a societal problem. Homelessness is a you problem. Homelessness is a they problem, yeah? It's not society's problem. It's the individual's problem. They are homeless because they made bad decisions. You just say, I'd like it if it was just given to me at the price that I want to pay. Do you have the answers to everything in the world? No, but I have the answer to this. It's called a free market. The amount of properties landlords own should be capped. A landlord should be able to own 100,000 properties if he fucking wants. Agree, 100%. I'm building right now a block of 48 houses. Should I be allowed to do that? You should be allowed to build them. And then but what? you shouldn't be allowed to profit from them. <laughs> Why? Why? That's how you know this girl is a hater. So he, he should be allowed to build them, but he shouldn't be allowed to profit them. Why are you worried about this guy making any money? I know for a fact this girl, because not everyone that rents is poor, but I know this girl is poor. I know she looks at people who are MPs earning 200 grand a year and think, well, why do they need to earn 200 grand a year? And uh, I know this girl is poor. She just oozes brokenness. She just oozes consumerism. How many properties do you have? Hundreds. Hundreds. Yes. Right. So you are probably making a significant income from all of those properties. If I wasn't making money from building properties, I wouldn't do it. And if no one does it, guess what? There's going to be way less supply. And How can you tell a man that he's not allowed to make money or yeah, build, invest in property, build properties and not make money? Crazy. It's going to be 10 times the price and you're going to be moaning about it even more. You shouldn't profit off them as a landlord. So what you're saying, I should be forced to sell them all, but I can make a you profit in get selling a job. them? This is what? Mm, you know, if I didn't like paying, I would have hit my head a lot harder than this, you know. Let's peel that back, blood. I can't. This girl is fucking crazy. Is it, this is what I'm saying, yeah? When you get to a certain level, you have to avoid certain people, yeah? I cannot. God forbid, yeah? Like, I, I, I knew someone like that that I have to interact with every day. Fucking hell. I don't want to be around anybody. Like, I hate people who are simple like this. And I've been to people's houses. Like, I know, man, and I, I, you get me, I know people who have got their significant other and that, and they're a simple-minded person. I remember I was at someone's house and I was saying, like, ah, oh, there's one youth hostel. Like, I can't remember I was talking about, oh, yeah, youth hostels are, 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 are ratchet and that. And then this person come and say, well, I, I know there's a youth hostel around the corner and it's quite nice inside. It's like, shut the fuck up, man. Shut up, bro. Like, you're talking about one nice youth hostel in a nice posh area. I'm talking about youth hostels on the ends, blood. You know these simple-minded people. You can't, you can't have certain in conversations around certain people, man. And you're gonna be moaning about it even more. You shouldn't profit of them as a landlord. So you saying I should be forced to sell them all, but I can make a profit you in get selling. Get a job. Them? Get a job. So no one's allowed to own a business. Fuck, you know. Well, obviously, she doesn't own her own business because why would someone who owns their own business tell someone who owns their own business, get a job? You want them to be a brokey and a wagey just like you. Fuck. Anyway, let me cost you, by the way. This is way more important than most jobs. This is the very thing that you have a problem with, which is the lack of supply of properties. I'm there yeah. building these properties and you're saying, go get a job. Yeah, what the that heck? should be funded by the government. The supply of property should be funded by the government, not by people who have to pay more money to you and put it in your personal pocket. My landlord, right, owns my whole building. There's four flats in it, including my own. From my building alone, he earns £60,000 a year. Double. Is that it? That's mm. double what the average UK salary is. Good for him. He deserves that. Significantly money. more than what I earn. And then I put 60% of my income straight into his pocket. Good. 
and I will never buy a house because that money, I will never see that money. I'm giving money to- You have put yourself in the position to never buy a house. It is your fault. It's your fault. Someone, right, for a place that I don't own, that I can't make changes to, that I can't paint, I can't, you know, decorate, I can't put things on the wall without permission, I can't have a pet without permission. But the thing is, everything you're saying boils down to, I want the government to help me. Every, the gov I was talking about this the other day in a video. You either take control of your life or someone is going to take control of your life. At some point, your life is going to be controlled by someone. It's either going to be you or the government or someone else. Make sure it's you. I control my life. Yeah? If you don't take control of your life, someone is going to seize that opportunity and take control of your life. And she's moaning about, oh, she can't have a pet in her house or her flat or whatever. It's because she's allowed someone to take control of her life. I can do what I want in this house. No one can tell me nothing. Because I've taken control of my life. Government should solve the problems. They don't, that's not the real world. You live in the property. You should fix it or take better care of it. Depends on what it is. I believe yeah. So if someone rents a property and that, they should take care of it as in like, you know, day to day cleaning and, you know, what I'm saying maintenance and that, you know, cleaning the shower, cleaning out the bathtub, vacuuming and stuff. But if something happens where, I don't know, the electrics fail and that, well, then no, it's down to the landlord to repair it and that. So, yeah, the tenants are supposed to do all the light cosmetic stuff, keep the place clean, tidy. You know what I'm trying to say? And it makes sure the place don't get um mold spores on the walls and that but if there is a serious damp problem it's got nothing to do with the tenant then yeah it's down to the landlord to fix it i'm not going to tell no my washing machine right prime example my washing machine broke down the other day at my most recent flat that i bought i went and bought a brand new wash machine i didn't go down there and assess the situation i'm not taking anything away from anyone if you want to go down there assess the situation i believed my tenants they told me that the wash machine broke down and that it why would they want a brand new washing machine? Why the fuck did they give a shit about getting a brand new washing machine? Like, they wouldn't lie about it. I didn't even go down there to check the washing machine. I just took my, my tenant's word for it and I just bought a brand new washing machine. Now, the reason why the washing machine broke down, it was the existing washing machine that came with the property. And, yeah, you could see that it was kind of old and that. So I just bought a brand new washing machine. I think it cost me like 250 or something. You know what I'm saying? Things like that, obviously, it's down to me to um, maintain the white goods and that. I've got, there's a cooker in there that came with the property. If the cooker fails and it stops working, I may get a cooker engineer to have a look at it. If not, I'll just buy a new cooker. It's my job. It's my job, but it's the tenant's job to keep the place clean. I actually had people call me up and say, my lights aren't working, it's an emergency. And then I've been like, oh man, they're not working, I'm so sorry. Bang, send someone out, paid an emergency electrician, and the light bulbs just need changing. Yeah, I personally do agree that you should change your own light bulb, but also what then happens, like, so some people have made repairs or like fixed up their property or like whatever, you know, changed their property in some way, you know, and changed the light bulbs, but their landlords are like, you shouldn't have done that because like yeah. we're supposed to be in They're, they're just idiot, I, idiot landlords. I've had a landlord like that. They were like, oh, you have to call us every time, like when you need the light bulb changed. Nah, like, I can idiots. buy my own light bulb. I want to I wanna put a picture up on the wall. You're not allowed. I'm not about that life. Yeah. My tenants are my customers. I mean, I told my tenants, don't put no pictures up on the wall and that. Now, I've got a guy in the flat. I think he's put some stuff up on the wall and that. But he said to me, before he leaves, he will make good. So he will fill the walls and stuff. Yeah, you damn right. You're not going to put holes in my wall. And then I have to go and repair it. If they give me money. Yeah. They should be grateful to me. I should be grateful to them. Win-win. So what happens in that situation? Yeah. A landlord doesn't fix something after multiple complaints, you know, and it's something really dangerous, like mold. Yeah, he should be held accountable, definitely. Or damp, something that will hurt you, which costs billions to the NHS. Mm -hmm. You talk about landlords not fixing things, mold problems, that's, that's a real issue. Imagine if the government cap rents. Now, now I'm not fixing shit now. Now I'm not making any profit. How am I supposed to fix stuff? Landlords let tenants live in dangerous or hazardous conditions. Yeah. Of course, there's, there's landlords that do. I've seen them programs there, 25 men in a free bed yard. Only one bathroom and a toilet, you know. Crazy. Doing is wrong. I can agree with that, yeah. Yeah. There are some really bad landlords out I there. I tell you who's worse, who's the, the worst landlord is though? The council. Look at um, Grenfell Tower. Yeah. And all the disgusting, horrible things that have happened. The council houses are the worst. So when people say, we should just rely on the government to provide all our housing, it's like, whoa, mm -mm, mm -mm. come to me, man, come to me. I'll give you better houses, believe me. And you'll pay me and it's cool, but I'll build houses. Don't go to the government, government, terrible. I'm a landlord, not a bad guy. 
Why do we have such a bad rep? I think landlords have such a bad reputation because renters are extremely frustrated where they can be evicted at a moment's notice, you know, where their rents can increase at a moment's notice, forcing them out of their area, forcing them to find new housing at the drop of a hat. I think it's all these horror stories that we've heard. They're frustrated that they're pouring thousands of pounds into this home that they, you know, reap no reward from. Mm -hmm. You know, they're just putting that money into their landlord's pocket. And, yeah. you know, if, if they're paying 30,000 pounds of rent a year, that, that money, if they had saved all of that up, they would have a house, you know, mm -hmm. they could be able to buy a house. That's true. I don't think that greedy landlords truly exist. Generally speaking, because the way you see it is, oh, if you're greedy and money grabbing and don't fix things, you make more money. That's actually not the case. Mm. From my experience of the thousands of investors that I have met and talked to and seen their books, the ones that treat their business like a true business and care about their customers, see their house as a product and a service and their tenant as a customer and look after them, they actually make more money. Mm. The greedy slum landlords are often broke. So they should be. So I, I think there's this skewed narrative that these greedy landlords that are making all this money, they're not. They're idiots. Have you ever seen those horror stories about people who like, you know, they changed the shower head like to a nicer one or, yeah. you know, they painted and it was like nicer. Yeah. And then they, you know, got their deposit taken away or yeah. their landlord just I think it's them? disgusting. I hate it. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> Do you think this has been hashed out? I think it's been hashed out really well. Hmm. Yeah. I think I think neither of us will come to a, an agreement on like certain things, but I think on some things we do have common ground and we do agree ostensibly on like a lot of things. Yeah. So yeah, I think it's been hashed out pretty well. Yeah, I think so. I think you're a very articulate person. Uh, Thank you. I think you deserve to be very successful in whatever you do. I've been a tenant, so I get it. She won't because she's got the mind of a poor person. Um. But I think you need to begin to be a bit more grateful to me for the houses that I'm building. <laughs> That'd be good. Sure. Maybe on a cold day in hell. Love to meet you. I think that was really interesting. I think that there's nothing more healthy than debating with people that you disagree with. It was, it was a lot of fun. Really enjoyed it. It was really interesting to kind of hear his perspective. You know, it was nice that we were able to kind of have like a conversation and do, and we did come to agreement on certain points, even if at, overall, maybe we disagree with each other. I wouldn't say it's changed my perspective at all. Hopefully it changed her perspective just a little bit. Yeah, I think my perspective has changed a little bit on a few things. I think maybe I probably should read up a little bit more on like the kind of economics of, of it and of like rent controls. I'm from a working class background. I know what it's like to be a tenant. I'm very aware of the problems. It's just the solutions that she was giving me just didn't make any logical sense at all. And have tried be, and have been tried and tested and failed miserably. I think I would sit down with him for another chat. I think we both had a lot of interesting things to say, but clearly there are some things I need to learn more about, some things he needs to learn more about. So maybe once we've both read up a little bit more on both of on those things. He doesn't need to read up on nothing. He knows the game in and out. The guy has not got thousands of properties in there and need to read up on anything, trust me. Then we could, you know, sit down again and talk about it and have a more well-rounded perspective overall. I would definitely sit down for another chat with her. And I think we could, I have a feeling we're gonna end up being friends one day. Hopefully I can help her get into property and become a millionaire, then she'll change her mind real quick. And she has a husband who I also mm. have a casual relationship with as well. How can you go for somebody else at the same time as me? Am I not enough? You just told me that I should be single. You're just cheating. Let me finish. Anyway, it would be funny, because obviously, basically Samuel Leeds, he has his own like, yeah, like training school. He trains people to become property entrepreneurs and that. Uh, it would be funny to see her in a couple of years' time saying that, yeah, I've just secured my fifth or sixth property and that, uh, and I'm making an excess of £5,000 profit a month and that. It would be funny. Yeah, people change their tune once uh, the circumstances change, innit? Anyway, man, that's it for today, man. I was looking forward to that video. I was not disappointed. Um, yeah, I'm going to wait for this one to come out. Basically, the YouTube channel is called IGTV, I believe, or something like that. So, um, but yeah, just type in like hash it out or something like that. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, I think it's called I I G or I D T V, something like that. But anyway, yeah, just uh, look for like you see here, yeah, in the top right hand corner, it says hash it out. Just type in hash it out on YouTube, and you should be able to find the channel. The channel's not called hash it out. I think the channel's called I G or I D T V or something like that. But um, 
Yeah. Uh, I'm going to wait for the monogamous pol versus polygamy thing to come out and I'll do a reaction video to that. All right, that's it for today, man. Stay wise. Tunnel.